faces that I haven't met before. Um, so I'm Ryan. Um, I uh, work for Rafa. I've been with Rafa maybe six years now. Uh, maybe six years plus. Just can't remember exactly when. Um, and I do marketing um, for them. I'm based out of San Francisco. I also run the, the Rafa, San, Rafa Cycling Club, RCC. Um, so that's our member, our cycling membership club. Um, sorry, my I, I locked my one-year-old in the other room with my grandma, and they're banging on the doors. Um, anyway, uh, we've done a lot of events over the over the quarantine on Zoom, um, and appreciate you guys joining. Um, the purpose of this one is just to talk to Tom Boss here. Um, Tom Boss is the uh, Off Roads and Events Direct Director, right? Right. For uh, Marin County Bicycle Coalition, um, and the way we kind of we synced up through a, a mutual friend, but Rafa is a I don't know if it's a presenting sponsor, let's just call it a proud sponsor of the Dirt Fondo series this year, which is taking on a little bit. Maybe some of you have done the Dirt Fondo in the past, or you're familiar with it. It's taken on a little bit different shape this year. Um, and maybe it's gotten even bigger because a little bit of a series with a, a real in real real life event at the end. Um, so Tom's here to talk a little bit about that, give us a little bit of intel on that, um, maybe some advice on gear. And this is kind of like an introduction to, to the series. So we're going to continue to talk about the series. We're going to continue to talk about cool gravel routes and stuff in, in Marin and north of the bridge. So stay tuned, um, plan on some in-person things like rides, um, some more focused talks on like things like nutrition and, and gear. Um, but this is kind of just to, to kick it off. So, so Tom can tell us a little bit about MCBC in, in case anybody's not familiar and then kind of give us an overview of the Durfano series. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you. Um, we, the Marin County Bicycle Coalition launched in uh, 1998 with a, with a goal to uh, promote bicycling for everyday transportation and recreation. And um, a lot of uh, urban areas have bicycle coalitions, San Francisco Bicycle Coalition, Los Angeles, New York. Um, we are um, kind of a hybrid in that we, we operate on the urban side with our, you know, promoting a better bicycling infrastructure and, uh, and facilities that also benefit walking um, throughout the county to make a, a, tr a bicycle a real viable transportation uh, device. And we're seeing more and more people uh, turn, leave their bikes or leave their cars at home and, and get on a bike. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the infrastructure that we've advocated for over the last 20 plus years. Um, but unlike a lot of urban areas, 50% of Marin's land mass is public parkland. We've got national parks, state parks, a watershed that's open to the public, which is somewhat rare, and then our uh, open space uh, preserves. So with all that parkland, uh, we're a magnet um, for road and mountain bike uh, cycling. We're also considered the birthplace of mountain biking. And now with the, um, with the, with the emergence of gravel, we're kind of merging the two, uh, mountain and road, into, into a, a new hybrid. And, uh, and we're just, you know, Marin's just an awesome place for all three of those types of cycling. Um, so we just, yeah, so our, um, we have an off-road program. That's what I manage. And our focus is uh, education, making sure everybody's playing safe and, and nice out there. Uh, we do environmental stewardship through trail maintenance and trail building projects. And then we also advocate for new uh, uh, riding opportunities. That includes new trails. And one of them, uh, Bill's Trail, is, is a great example. And that's on our um, on our. Um, Bellinus Ramble route uh, that we'll be talking about today. I, I guess I didn't I didn't ask anybody to, to mute their mics, but we're gonna kind of take questions at the end, right? Open up for a QA at the end, right, Tom? Sure. Yep. Yeah, and I just want to take a quick moment to to acknowledge uh, Rafa. We're really excited to be working uh, with you guys this on this series and in general. Um, I've been a big fan of not only your product, but just kind of your culture. Um, you guys put out about a year ago, the Rafa Roadmap, um, which was a series of articles you commissioned on how to get more people on bikes, more engaged in competitive cycling. And it was a really uh, very, um, yeah, very helpful uh, for me. And I think anybody in the business or in advocacy should take a look at that series. But it's one example of many of how Rafa uh, gives back to the cycling community. So 
uh, really excited to be working with you and your uh, and your club club members today. Yeah, definitely. Same goes here. I think uh, um, you know, ninety nine percent of our riding, probably aside from commuting for anybody that lives in the city, is in Marin. So I think it makes a lot of sense. And there's so much there's so much beauty up there. And it's like for people who for people who live there, it's great too. But for people who live in the city, it's it's an easy escape. Um, it helped us keep, probably keep our sanity through the past year. Or so. I think it just makes a lot of sense to, to partner up with you guys and um, just excited. I'm personally, I'm excited to learn more about the trails and, and learn more about the history in Marin and, you know, learn more about this event as well. Sure. Yeah. And, and you mentioned, uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of people, um, you know, benefited from um, all the parkland that we had uh, during the pandemic. It was one of the few ways we could um, kind of, remove ourselves from a stressful time and get fresh air and in some cases you know uh, have it some some social uh, components again and uh, and we we benefited we had our best uh, year in giving um, I think because so many people made the connection between MCBC and 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 all these great riding uh, you know opportunities in the county um, and and a lot of people um, obviously, leave the city come up to Marin we're, you know we're the closest place to get in some good some good riding so we definitely want to um, connect with those folks we already do have a lot of our members are in San Francisco and I think it's a good I'm a I'm a member of the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition because I love what they're doing in the city um, but by all means um, I look forward to engaging with more people from San Francisco and the East Bay and um, and uh, making that connection between their rides and, and the work that we do. So what do we want to cover next? You want to dive right into the, the Fondo and give us a background on the Fondo and, and what it's sure. looking like for this year? Yeah, so um, yeah, we've been doing the Dirt Fondo for, for nine years now, and it, it's generally a one-day in-person event. Um, the main, the route we've done for years, we call it the Mount Tam Epic. It starts in the Marin Headlands, goes to Mount Tam and back, and um we didn't get to do it last year because of the pandemic, but like many organizations, we kind of had to reinvent ourselves and um, and we came up with a couple of do-it-yourself activities last year that were very successful that kind of replaced the um, the in-person event. And we decided this year, uh, as we as we build up to um, to our August in-person event, to continue those uh, do-it-yourself activities that were very popular last year. And we're also coupling it with something that we've been wanting to do for a long time. And um, like to give a shout out to one of our other sponsors, Studio Velo, a bike shop in Mill Valley. They have a really good um, uh, Marin Classic series on their website. You can go see like four of the real classic road bike routes in Marin. They're well curated. They have beautiful graphics for each one. We've been wanting to mimic that on the off-road side. And so the Dirt Fondo provided an opportunity to come up with, <clears throat> with additional routes that kind of highlight the best of off-road cycling in Marin around the county with three or four different routes. And, uh, and these are available initially to our Dirt Fondo participants. Uh, we roll them out monthly from now through uh, July. And then afterward, they'll be available for the general public to go experience. And then uh, we're, yeah, we're all signs are looking good for um, our ability to, to have an in-person event on August 14th to bring back the Dirt Fondo, um, that, that uh, Mount Tam route. And uh, yeah, we've got all our permits in and, um, and we're, we're getting um, uh, signs that we're going to be able to hold that in-person event with some minimal um, precautions in place, obviously. Yeah, things are looking good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think of these fondos as there's, um, I mean, I've been riding in Marin now for, for, I guess, close to 10 years and, and a lot of dirt, but there's so much stuff that I had that I don't know about and ways to link these trails up and I'm, I'm learning every day. So I think that that doing these, these fondos and, and having these, these, um, you know, sessions with you and hopefully some in-person rides and events is a great way to get to, to learn these things so on your own and you can show your friends because that's, that's how I learn is my friends kind of you know show me or I see a route here or there but I mean, there's stuff that I wish I would have discovered years ago that has become kind of a, a weekly thing that I do you know yeah and discovery you know is 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 part of the routes that we've put together um you know I've I've 
pretty much ridden everything in Marin. And I'm still amazed that people that I ride with, you know, that I've been riding with for over a decade and we go down something like old V, which is on our ride this year. And they're all, Whoa, I've never ridden on this. What is this? And uh, so, yeah, we have um, like on our first, our first ride, the uh, Bolinas Ridge ramble, we have Bolinas Ridge trail, which is really a must. If you haven't done it, it's um, just a beautiful um, stretch of trail on a ridge line. Uh, you, you start, start in a, a redwood canopy opens up into these rolling green hills. Um, uh, but then there's a, a little things along the way. Like if you do the big route, we're dropping people down McCurdy trail, which is an old Jeep road that's turned into kind of a flowy single track. Um, we're going up a Lima Valley trail, um, which is a whole nother, which is a, a, a trail in the uh, Point Reyes National Seashore that a lot of people don't realize is, is a bike legal trail experience in the seashore. And then we come up Randall, which is a pretty well known uh, climb, but um, that's a first opportunity for people to kind of, you know, pace themselves and see how, how quickly they can get up that, um, up that climb. Um, yeah. And then we also, uh, after uh, we climb along Bolinas Ridge, we drop down onto the Cross Marin Trail, which has been around for decades, a really famous flat, uh, mostly paved facility that's great for people starting out. It winds through Samuel P. Taylor Park. Um, and, and, then we, and then we take folks on a nice journey up uh, Bill's Trail, which, is, which has only been open for a year to bicyclists. And it's a phenomenal trail. It's, in my opinion, one of the most scenic bike legal trails in the county. Um, and it's, it's great on any bike in both directions. So just a, a few of the key things you'll see on our uh, first ride rolling out this weekend. Yeah, I don't even know if I've even done Bill's Trail. But um, Cross Marin is, I think, maybe the only flat gravel <laughs> in Marin. People are always asking me for like that. To, how do you, how do I get started on gravel? What's the tamest gravel around? And I have to usually point to the headlands because uh, there just isn't much worth without without a decent amount of climbing or descending. Well, there there is one other place, and that's Point Reyes, and we have um, our Point Reyes, and um, our our third our 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 July um, uh, virtual or uh, do it yourself ride is is going to be discovering a lot of those uh um routes and that's some pretty good gravel country too that said this is this is the start as a mountain bike event and all these all these rides are built uh, with mountain bikes in mind but you can do them on a gravel bike as well which one's more fun it depends on the on the on the route i would say this uh this first one i think uh a hardtail with suspension is probably the best all around because you have some road segments that are going to be a little slow on a, on a full suspension bike. Uh, but there are some steep and rutted bits that are going to be a little challenging on a gravel bike. Um, and uh, the dirt Fondo, I would say that that's probably more a full suspension bike, a lot of up and down and a lot of trail on that one. Uh, the the, the uh, Mount Tam Epic, excuse me, in, on August. Um, but then um, the uh, Point Reyes one is probably a uh, probably real gravel friendly route. So and then we have our. Um, yeah, and then the the middle one there, the uh, Solstice Scorcher again, I probably I'd probably bring a mountain bike to that one. Yeah, I guess it kind of depends on what you're what you're comfortable on, because I used to force myself to do everything on a gravel bike because that's just what I rode, but um, broke that over the pandemic and ended up riding a hardtail. And I, I realized some of these trails, you know, like Pine Mountain and, and some of these more rockier trails that you really suffer on a gravel bike could be a lot more fun and sometimes a little more fast uh, on the mountain bike. But then you got, it depends if you're coming from the city and do you want to ride a mountain bike out to wherever you start the dirt, it's kind of a toss up. Well, and we also always say run, run, run what you brung. You know, if you if all you got is a mountain bike, uh, then that's the bike for you. If 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 you've got a gravel bike, then you know you can make it work. Um, I would not I would not recommend a road bike. Uh, I know, <laughs> but anything else, I think uh, you'd be all right. Yeah, um, I don't know, Tom. Is there anything anything else on that you want to cover? Do you want to you want to open up for some questions? Uh, 
I think, yeah, I think, I think uh, I'm, I'm ready for some questions. Oh, I did want to mention that the, that our first ride that rolls out on Saturday, although you can do it anytime over the, over the next three weeks, uh, you can do it on the weekends, on the weekdays, you can break it up, but um, the, it officially, your, your uh, opens up on Saturday and uh, it starts and ends at the Marin Bicycle excuse me, the Marin Museum of Bicycling, which is also the Mountain Bike Hall of Fame. And uh, we really encourage people to, uh, to uh, they're open now. So go check it out if you haven't. And even if you have, it's probably been a while and they do rotate the collection. So um, yeah, and it's, it's just a really great um, facility. And unlike some museums where you're seeing art on the wall by people who haven't been around for for decades, um, you might get Joe Breeze or Otis Guy uh, giving you a tour uh, who are a couple of the pioneers of mountain biking. So um, do uh, put a little side of time, a little time aside to uh, visit the museum. I'm embarrassed to say I've never been, and it's been on my list for a long time. Well, it's not just mountain bikes, but they've, they've got it all. It's a really uh, great kind of history, visual history of uh, bikes in general. And of course, they do have uh, a lot of the first mountain bikes in there as well. So check it out. Yeah, I think um, we've, we've had, I, I don't know everybody on this, what everybody's cycling is experiences on this call, but we've had so many new cyclists to to come into the world in the last year, um, especially in the Bay Area. And um, I mean, I'm a transplant, so I wasn't here when those, uh, I don't even know, if I, I don't remember what year it was that mountain biking was actually born, but I was pretty young. And um it's really cool to, to to learn about the history and the builders and the riders and, and the kind of gear that they were riding back then um doing you know riding the same stuff we're doing on this on just you know like single speed clunkers right you know yeah that's it was Where's coaster brake bikes that's right um so i'm not sure everybody on the call if you signed up or if you're interested in signing up but um you're welcome to to ask questions or else I'm going to just start asking questions. So um, feel free to, to jump in. Does anybody have anything? Hi, I'm Kristen Levine. Thank you everybody for organizing. Uh, I guess, I don't know if you've covered this yet, but um, how do you keep track of us? Like, should, do we just put it on Strava and then you can kind of see that we've done it? Or do we do go through um, Ride GPS? How does that work? Right. So, um, yeah, if you're, if you're familiar with Ride GPS or you're kind of a bit of a techie, you can um, figure out how to sync it with whatever you're currently using if you're not using Ride with GPS. Um, or you can just record it on your on your Garmin or your Strava, and then later on upload it to the Riva GPS. But at some point, if you're participating in the event, we encourage you to do that, uh, get it on Riva GPS, because then you're going to be in some competitions and you can see uh, how you're doing against uh, all the other folks. Um, we're actually gonna uh, probably uh, give some prizes to the people who did it in the longest amount of time. And we have some other little tricks. So yeah, it's not gonna be about the fastest necessarily, uh, we're going to have lots of different uh, opportunities to win some gifts. So, but you'll have to be, um, you'll have to get your route up there by the uh, close of the event, which is May 30th, I believe, uh, to make sure that you're in on those, um, on those contests. Um, is that, is it, is it set up with, um, I don't know if you saw like the hopper challenge and stuff like that. Is it set up where people can see where they stack up on, on, even the overall or segments and things exactly we have a, a leaderboard and uh and you have and to get on there you have to get a unique link which we only send to people who are registered for the event speaking from yeah. having done some of these things it's really cool to it's very right with gps not a lot of if you haven't used it it can be like a little bit um daunting maybe at first if you if you're only used to strava but it is really simple to navigate through there. And it's really cool that it, it just automatically shows you kind of, you can slice it all different ways you want to see where you stacked up, but it's kind of fun to see what other people did um, and where you ended up on the day. And if you want to go back some time and improve on your time or whatever, not all about time, just saying as me as somebody who's very competitive, it's fun to even compete against myself. Well, and that was one of the reasons we went with Ride with GPS is because there's a lot more custom, custom, uh, customizability for the for the route planning. You know, you, we've used Strava in the past, but all you have is a line on a map, 
where uh, with this feet with this uh, platform we're able to do points of interest call out where the water is call out where dangerous sections are and uh, and also have this leaderboard uh and in segment um segments as well so you can kind of um yeah focus on just certain aspects of um of the of the route and gauge it against others so all right you got a question i do so could you do this twice okay. and pick your best time sure Oh, cool. Yeah, I don't see. Yeah, I don't see. I don't think that would be uh, an issue if you, as long as you put, uploaded it. Yeah, as long as you do it in the window to record, um, record all your times, and then obviously your best would be uh, at the up, you know, up in the high, above the others. That's my writing buddy over there. So we'll probably be doing it twice. All right. <laughs> I I learned when I did one of these. Um, I don't know, a couple months ago. I, uh, I didn't know where a certain <laughs> where a certain segment started. So I had just, somebody told me it was right here and I just, either we didn't start it right and we just kind of slow rolled and we just stood there for like a couple of minutes. And then one, we just stopped before the end. So I, yeah, me being a little crazy, had to go back and redo it. But it just kind of, yeah, it just chooses your, if it's, if it's like how I think it is, it just chooses your best time. Yeah, and at it's probably a good time to put a plug in for, um, you know, we are, these are all on public lands. We have to follow all the rules and uh, we want you to have a fun time. But obviously when you see other, uh, other people out on the trail, whether on bike or foot or horse, always slow down, announce your presence with a howdy or a hello. And, uh, and uh, if you run into horses in particular, we, we suggest that you, uh, you talk with the rider and ask for direction. You know, if they want you to stop and move to the side of the trail, it's rare that you see them, so please give them that extra uh, bit of courtesy. Definitely, good plug. I, this is something I, you know, this is something we want to focus on with Rafa too, and, and maybe in another one of these talks down the road is, is um, educate everybody on on kind of just the simple things you may not know on the trail, like certain trail etiquette. Um, there's a lot more people on the trails. It seems I mean I don't know the actual numbers, but it seems like there's a lot more people on the trails over the last year, um, and so that can a good thing it can also be a bad thing if people don't know exactly how to interact with others but there's room for all of us out there i know that there's plenty of trails for all of us and it's nice to see people out there riding the dirt together yeah and, and it's funny you should say that because you know this particular route um this first one out at Blinus ridge and mccurdy and Lima Valley, I rarely see anybody on those trails, but in, but definitely during the pandemic, we saw visitation quadruple in some cases. And so I'm seeing people pretty much on every trail when I go out, especially on the weekend. So you're likely to see some folks out there. Um, and yeah, again, just uh, just be be uh, friendly, uh, give, give an advance notice that you're coming up and uh, slow down. Any other questions? Route questions, bike questions, tires, food, apparel? I, I think you, do you wonder which, 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 as far as like how, uh, how, how technical this one is compared to the others? I, can, I think you already covered what type of bike for this. Yeah, I think it's kind of a in in the middle there. I would say the Mount Tam Epic is and the Solstice uh, Scorcher are both probably a little more technical and you know probably more mountain bike uh, appropriate. Um, this one is is probably a little more in the middle, and our Point Reyes uh, ride is is uh, is probably the mildest where you could probably do that. Uh, you know, do the whole thing pretty easily on a on a gravel bike or or mountain bike. Um, but yeah, there's definitely, if you do, if you are on a, on a mountain bike, you should be fine on the, on the descents, uh, old V is pretty steep and there's some, uh, rutted bits on, on the road, um, a little loose here and there. Uh, same with McCurdy. McCurdy has a lot of rocks. I, I went down there once on a gravel bike and was having a pretty good time. Um, but the upper section has some rocky sections and I did end up, uh, getting a puncture and had to throw a tube in, um, but but yeah, other than that, it's uh, uh, you know then uh, Alima Valley is pretty pretty fun on any bike. Uh, all the climbs are, are are mountain or gravel friendly, um, and Bill's Trail is is just like I said, it, you can do it on you can almost do that on a road bike. It's a really buttery smooth 
really gradual, uh, mostly gradual climb. There are some rock, uh, rock armor crossings at some of the creeks, but uh, you can always jump off on those if you're on a skinny tire bike. Yeah, fair enough. I guess I'll kind of experiment too with what, what tires and all that stuff. There's, they seem, I keep going bigger and bigger on my gravel tires, so. Around, yeah, Marin, Marin is, uh, it's funny, it's uh, like an enduro, big full suspension, 160 millimeter travel bike is probably too much for Marin, but uh, but uh, 32, uh, what do you call it, file treads is not enough. Uh, so we're we're kind of in the middle of, of most stuff. Yeah, I remember when a, a big tire was a 32 and we were going up railroad on 32. I feel like railroad's gotten a little bit rockier over the years, but yeah, now, now it's much bigger. I probably remember doing it in 25 at one point. So times have changed. And so you do not, you don't need to buy a gravel bike, but you can ride a mountain bike. Like you said, ride what you wrong. I think it's awesome just, you know, as somebody who races and trying to trying to choose the right bike for an event, it also just depends on what you maybe not even the best tool for the job, but maybe the tool that you're you're most comfortable with. You feel like you're you can control the best and you know the best. Sorry, was that a question or? Uh, oh no, sorry. Was just, uh, yeah, was just spouting. Um, anybody else? Any other questions? Anybody on the fence about signing up? Who's has signed up? Let's raise the hand. <laughs> Um, anything else you want to cover, Tom? Like I said, uh, for those of you, I, I know a few people uh, came on late. Um, this is kind of the first of, of hopefully many, not hopefully, but definitely going to be a few um, talks that we're going to host um, that tie into the Dirt Fondo and, and also just into riding some of the trails and, and navigating your way around Marin. Um, so look for more talks to be added to the schedule. And, and Tom and I were just talking today about <laughs> getting some actual physical rides going. Um, so if you're an RCC member, we're going to be posting those in the app. Um, we haven't brought group riding back just yet, but it's, it's coming soon and in a safe and responsible way. So keep an eye out. Yeah, and we're also recording this, so I'm going to, Tom's going to post it. Sorry, Tom. Yeah, I was just going to say one one thing I do want to call out is the uh, just being prepared. We we sent a message out to participants. Uh, this one we don't have water for for quite a for about thirty miles, so uh, definitely you know come prepared with at least two or three bottles or or a hydration pack. Um, and then we do, but we do have water um, uh, uh, in uh, Samuel P. Taylor. So and then food. You know, this is not a supported ride like on our. Traditional dirt fonda, we have four rest stops, lots of food. You don't have to carry much with you. But on these rides, these do it yourself. You you should be carrying gear with you. You want your food, you want to have plenty of water, plenty of water, and potentially layers, depending on what the weather looks like. You might want to start with the jacket, but have somewhere to stash it if you need to take it off. So um, yeah, be have some storage on your on your biker body. Um, bring some good hearty food. I like to bring a sandwich or a slice of pizza as well as some uh, some snacks. Um, so and that's what I got. And then, yeah, make sure you have the route uploaded or that you're with a group who knows uh, their way around. Definitely, good advice. I think since the pandemic started and I started doing these longer rides, a uh, bar bag has been a standard go-to for me and just shoving all my snacks in there and then carrying two tubes instead of one <laughs> and some sort of running tubeless. It's nice to have a little plug uh, if you guys know how the Dyna plugs are those bacon strips they use that are coming quite handy when you're on the trail. Yeah, both mountain and gravel, you've got the tubeless, hopefully, and the and those um, those plugs work really well. Or if you if you're if you do get a hold of it small enough, you start to see the the um, um, sealant come out. Just spin your wheel down and wait, and a lot of and most of the time they'll seal up without the need of a plug. Um, obviously carry a tube in case the plug or the sealant doesn't work. Uh, you mentioned a bar bag and, and that the thing I love about the bar bag um, is that it's right out in front of you and you can 
you can get your, you know, it's great for snacks or the, what's it called? The bento is another good one on the top too, but something where you don't have to stop and unzip something you can just reach in is a, is definitely a good, good thing to have on these longer rides. Definitely. I, I, I feel like you kind of forget. I used to be a minimalist kind of guy on my bike and I didn't like certain things hanging from my bike, but if you get the right, you know, you get the right fit, get the right size for your bike. Rafa makes one, but there's other companies that make little tiny smaller ones. You kind of forget it's there. At least I do. So nice to have the stuff and bring good snacks. Good snacks are like a good ride. Okay, everybody. I'm sorry. Let's go ahead. Tom. Oh, I was just going to say, does anybody, what's your favorite, uh, What's your favorite advice on food? Is anybody like a nutritionist out there and have, have a secret weapon to get you through these long rides? How about you, it's Carly? It's going to be hard to top pizza. We like uh, smoked oysters and triscuits. Oh, fancy. Wow. And you have a way to carry that, huh? With that I it. do. <laughs> you have to eat good food. Yeah. Yeah, swing by the Marshall store or Hog Island, grab a few. Anyone else? Any tips? Who hasn't done a, a big ride like this? I'm just curious. Who hasn't done 40 plus miles uh, with 5,000 feet of elevation and uh, out there? This is maybe the first time out doing this big, big ride. Got Jeff. Raising his hand, cool. Well, take your time and uh, yeah, reach out. Uh, my my uh, my contact information is um, on the event page. Be sure and write it down. You can call me if you get out there and you're in a bind. Email me before the ride. I'm happy to give advice. And um, any guys who live in the city, if you need gear or anything, I'm not trying to like sell things, but um, you're welcome to give us a call, at Rafa. Um, we have a lot of cool things that help, like the cargo bibs, things like that are kind of, I find very helpful for gravel riding to just shove extra snacks in your phone, your phone mainly in the, in the, um, in the cargo bibs. Um, but yeah, we're always happy to help and happy to help with routes and stuff as well. If you're training for, for the, uh, for Fondo. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give a little plug. That's my favorite Rafa kit is their cargo bibs because they have pockets on both legs. And so I can put, you know, I, I, I carry my phone or headphones in one of them and a snack in the other that I can grab real easy. And that's, uh, to me, that's a, a real game changer having the pockets on your bibs. Definitely. And so, I mean, some people are, you know, it's become quite fashionable now to wear t-shirts on bikes and technical mm -hmm. t-shirts or whatever, but when you wear those, you don't have any place to put your phone and your snacks. So it's kind of a, it's a different way to ride. Sometimes I, sometimes I go with the t-shirt, but mostly I'm Lycra, but it is kind of fun. Break it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of cool products like that. And we'll have even more gravel stuff coming out. We have gravel shoes and, and all sorts of stuff. And I think I mentioned Marin service course. Is carrying Rafa now. They don't carry all of it, but they've got a decent selection there. Um, and yeah, so with that, thank you guys all for coming. Tom, thank you so much for your time. To everybody who's competing in this, good luck, have fun, um, just enjoy your time out there. And like Tom said, say, say hi to everybody. That's kind of like my favorite thing is to try to try to wave as much as possible. All right. Well. Um, Look forward to the next one. Um, keep an eye out. Tom will be messaging. I'll be messaging. And um, Tom, we're going to share this. Do you want to mention where we're going to share the uh, recording link? In case anybody wants yeah, to share we, we have uh, MCBC, uh, Marin County Bicycle Coalition has a YouTube channel. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got a lot of good content on there already. And we'll be posting this on there, um, hopefully in the next few days. OK. Cool. Well, everybody have a good night. And um, I, got a, I got a quick question before we go. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I came on late. Sorry if this has already been talked about, but um, when are we going to be able to pick up the bottles and where? So um, we're we're waiting for the county to clear kind of, you know, in-person gatherings. So what we're what our what our plan is, is to have we think by July we'll be able to we'll get the green light to have uh, kind of a check in like we've traditionally had for the dirt fondo. 
So we're going to have the bottles. You're going to get um, so uh, we have some snacks for you that'll be available um, starting this weekend. We'll explain in the emails how to get that. But but the bulkier swag, we're going to have um, uh, in-person check-in events in July where you'll get all that kind of all that additional stuff. And then uh, any any and then if you uh, if you're part of the August event, we'll have uh, more stuff for you at that event as well. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> Cool. Anything else? Anybody else? All right. Well, have a good evening and happy riding. Thanks. Bye, everybody. The rubber dam. <laughs>